Turning now to the presidential race, new polling shows that President Trump may be losing some of his support among evangelical and religious voters. A poll from the left-leaning faith group Vote Common Good surveyed these types of voters in five swing states who voted for President Trump in 2016 and found that 11 percent could now swing to support Joe Biden. For more on this, I want to bring in Doug Paget. He's the executive director of Vote Common Good. Doug, why does President Trump appear to be losing support from these evangelical voters right now? Yeah, well, I think Donald Trump is losing these religious and faith voters who are from the evangelical and Catholic traditions because he's earned it, uh, because the way that he has comported himself as the president of the United States just is so off-putting to so many of these Christian faith voters that they're finally saying, well, maybe we gave him a chance in 2016, but we're not going to do that again. And uh, we're watching a an awakening happen within the evangelical and Catholic communities when it comes to their lack of support for Donald Trump. But a lot of the things that we saw from President Trump, the candidate on the campaign trail uh, in the last election are, are the same things that he's doing right now. So what is it about voters who supported President Trump uh, previously that's making them change their minds? Is it because they had hoped that as president he would conduct himself differently? Yeah, Lauren, I think you're I think you're right on about that. We we do a number of interviews with uh, people who voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and are saying that they're not going to vote for him in 2020. It's in a program we call Hindsight 2020. And so many of these voters are saying that they thought that all that bravado, they thought that all that posturing was the way he was going to run for office, but not the way that he was going to be president. And person after person just says, I can't tolerate it anymore. I need my president to be someone that's not my pastor, but I don't want the president to be violating my sense of what right and wrong is. And the biggest thing that came out in this poll among these evangelical and Catholic voters was it was Donald Trump's lack of kindness that caused them to drop their support for him, which, frankly, I'll tell you as a pastor and as someone who cares a lot about the civility in our country, I'm glad to see that many in the Christian community are standing up for basic kindness, as well as for a Christian ethic of treating people well. Is that what some of these voters are seeing in Joe Biden as a candidate? Are you finding that that the folks that you're talking to intend to actually switch their votes or sit this one out? Yeah, well, great question. Yeah, it's both. Uh, some of the voters are switching their vote. They voted for Donald Trump in 2016, and they've said, I'm not going to do that again, and they're putting their support behind Joe Biden. And it's not that others are sitting it out. It's actually going the other way. There was a significant portion of voters who didn't vote for either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton in 2016. These are voters from the evangelical and Catholic traditions, and they're not going to sit out this election cycle. They saw what happened when they sat it out, and nearly all of those voters in this poll coming back into the voting race are going to vote for Joe Biden in this race. And I was actually surprised by that. We, we do work with voters all over the country. In fact, I'm in Milwaukee today. We'll travel to Michigan next week. We'll be off in Ohio and Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Florida. We run live in-person outdoor socially distanced events. Um, and we've been doing this for more than two years all around the country, talking to voters and helping them to articulate what's happening inside of them as it relates to their vote. And uh, we're seeing people who said, yeah, I tried to stay out of it because both candidates in 2016 seemed like someone that I couldn't support. But they know what the consequence of that would be in 2020, and they want to make sure that Donald Trump is not elected president on November 3rd. Well, the president released his list of potential Supreme Court nominees just this yeah. week. Is that a persuasive argument to evangelical and faith-based voters, particularly those that are pro-life, for them to vote for him again. Yeah, you know, that came up in the polling. Like, is there something the president could do? And what I think is really good news is that there's no policy that he can promise. There's no Supreme Court justice he can nod toward that's going to overcome his lack of kindness and his inability to execute the job, which was the other part of the poll that we found so powerful. So many people said that it was Donald Trump's lack of competence. And you start combining his cruelty with his lack of competence, and it doesn't matter what's being promised, because for a lot of voters, especially these evangelical and Catholic faith voters, they're not willing to make the deal that they made in 2016, hoping that somehow Donald Trump will be different 
than the way that he's campaigned. So I think they have a much more clear picture this time. And basically, to put it bluntly, I don't think there's any way to bribe these people into voting for Donald Trump again. I think this 11 percent swing that we've seen from these voters, I think it's permanent and it's only going to grow over the next 52 days. And if this 11 percent swing is, in fact, something that holds when it comes to November, what effect might this have on President Trump's reelection campaign? Well, all these voters that we are talking about are ones that we polled in the swing states. So in Michigan, in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Florida. And we've run the numbers. And if there's even half of that number of Catholic and evangelical voters that changed their vote or come out for Joe Biden rather than sitting out the election, that's far more than Donald Trump's margin of victory in any of those states. So he is in real trouble with these voters and he's in real trouble with the, uh, I think with the American population as a whole. And it's going to happen on election day that it's clear that these voters are joining with the rest of the people of the American um, electorate to say, it's just enough of Donald Trump. And frankly, this guy has got to go. And look, we're not talking about people who even identify as Democrats. Uh, with the work that we do at Vote Common Good, we're not asking Republicans to stop being Republicans. We're asking Republicans to not vote for this guy because it just doesn't fit any sense of the common good or any sense of what these voters feel is right and wrong. And that, that message is clearly resonating. All right, Doug Padgett, thank you for joining us. Thank you.